Well, this is David Tal. This is the Balagan Connection. And uh, this is going to be a little bit of a different kind of connection because there's a couple of different things that, that, are, that are happening. Um, the first thing that are happening, the first thing that is happening is that this is the last of the Balagan Connections uh, that are going to be filmed here in Israel. I'm on my way to the airport in a couple of hours and I will be getting on a plane and flying out to California and I will be continuing the Balagan connection from there. And I am um, kind of have mixed feelings about that. Uh, I'm going to miss this, uh, but I feel that there's a need for me to be there, to talk to people, to go to churches and explain things. But uh, I'm going to share a little bit about what happened to me today before we go into to the, the bigger picture because... Again, I had a family come over uh, this afternoon, this morning, and basically while I'm in the States, I will be letting a young family from the area in the South use my apartment as a place to get away from, from the Balagan. And uh, they came over. The father is in the army. He's up in the north, actually staring down the Hezbollah. But, you know, two little girls, a little son, and, and a mother and a grandmother, and you're going to be using this home to feel safe away from, from the war zone. And, and again, there's a lot of things we can say about this country. There's a lot of things that we can say about uh, the different aspects, a lot of things that we can say about the politics. But one of the things I want to stress more than anything that this country has come together in a way that is, that is second to none. And, and just to share my own feelings about this, I felt really, really good. I felt that this is a part of, of what I'm doing. And, and I, I'm sharing this because I want you to understand who we are. Went out to have coffee with my mom at the local Aroma, and if you don't know what an Aroma is, uh, it's like uh, Starbucks on steroids. I mean, so much better. And, and we're sitting there and having coffee, and I'm just, I'm just watching the interaction. This whole country is on a war footing, which means... Um, everybody is either in the army or knows somebody in the army. And I'm, we're just sitting there, and, and a family walks in. The girl is in the military. She's carrying a rifle on her shoulder and in combat boots, and, and her mother's just hugging her because we know that she's got a couple of hours off before she has to go back in. And her father is looking at her proudly, you know, and and, and a couple of minutes walk by, and, and, and we get our coffee, and... and uh, a father walks in. Now, this is a uh, reservist, meaning he's got long hair and he's got a man bun, actually. Long beard, but he's carrying a rifle on his shoulder and he's in combat boots. But, you know, his, his shirt's out and, and he's like a reservist, a different kind of soldier. But he walks in with his daughter and, and they're having a couple of hours before he goes back into the army. Uh, and then I'm sitting there, you know, and I'm kind of figuring out this is what Israel is. And then two Arabs walk in from, from the, uh, the machine shop or from the car shop across the street. And they are safe and they are sure and they're laughing. And, and again, in a, in a microcosm, this is what Israel is. You know, and, and people talk about apartheid. This is a, a country that, that when we go to war, everybody goes to war. And then another young couple walks in. In this case, it's, it's a young uh, man, very handsome, uh, you know, very... Uh, and you can see that he's in a combat unit and a very, very pretty girlfriend. And they're, they're kissing and hugging before he goes off to battle. And, and I'm sitting there and I'm saying, God, take care of these people. Israel is in Gaza right now and the battle has gotten fierce. Today we got news of, of 15 soldiers that died inside Gaza. And when I say 15 soldiers, these are, these are 15 of these kids that I just saw a couple of hours ago. It's, it's 15 of our people. I know people who are inside Gaza. So when you hear the number, you know, the news say that there's been 15 casualties over the last two days. I, I start going, wait a minute, I need to talk to my brother because my nephew is in. And wait a minute, I need to talk to somebody that I know is in. And, and wait a minute, there's, there's somebody that I know his son is in, in a tank unit. And, and this is what it's like to be at war in this country. 
But let me make this clear. Israel has gone to war. We cannot allow what happened on the 7th of October to ever happen again. And, and it's going to cost us. It's going to cost us the lives of, of young men and women. And, and God forbid, I, even part of my family that's inside. But we are going into war. We understand this. We realize this. Israel is making um, advance inside the, the battle itself. But again, the enemy is hiding inside underneath its civilian population. Uh, the story that's going around the Internet today is uh, Israel bombed a facility that was underground in a refugee camp uh, called uh, Jabalia. Uh, the Palestinians are saying there were hundreds dead. We I think that we know that there were probably about 30 or 40 dead, and we know that most of them were Hamas militants that were literally posted or placed underneath. And we know that there were secondary explosions, which means that after we bombed the site, more things that were in there underneath these civilian po buildings exploded. But again, Israel's been dragging, been dragged through the gutter for attacking civilians. You know, the CNN says Israel attacks a refugee camp. No, we did not attack a refugee camp. We attacked a military target that was placed inside the refugee camp exactly for this reason. And again, the battle that's being fought outside is horrific. And, and again, I'm coming over to the United States to ha ha be part of that battle, battle, but I need you to understand that this battle is a battle for truth, this battle is a battle for our right to defend ourselves. And when people are calling for a ceasefire, okay, they're calling for us to let Hamas get away with this. And, and let's make this clear, very clear. Israel will not stop this time until the Hamas is destroyed. So get yourselves ready. We're getting ourselves ready. We're, we're, we're in a war effort. Um, I'm in a war effort. And, and I, was, I was sitting here thinking about, okay, how do I want to connect this? How do I want to end this? How do I want to make this kind of clear? And uh, I want to read a passage uh, that kind of came up. And in this case, we're going to read a passage from the book of Deuteronomy. Uh, this is uh, Deuteronomy chapter 20, and I'm going to go on to, to verse 1. And it says this. When you go out to battle against your enemies and you see horses and chariots and people more numerous than you, do not be afraid. Do not be afraid of them, for the Lord your God is with you, who brought you out from the land of Egypt. The enemy is, is entrenched and embedded in client-side civilian population. The war is not only a war for military targets, it's a war for legitimacy and it's a war for everything else. But I'm not going to be afraid because I know who is going to win this battle. I think you know who is going to win this battle. But pray for us, men, women, children, Older people, younger people, pray for the families who have sons now inside this battle. Pray for everybody who's around. Pray for the families who have sent their fathers into battle or are now going to be spending time waiting and, and, and how do you say, uh, terrified of every phone call. Pray for, for the people of Israel. Pray for God's chosen people. And, and well, pray for the peace of Jerusalem. This is David Tal. This is the Balagan Connection. This is the last of the Balagan Connections that's going to come to you from, from here. The next time we'll be talking will be on your side of, of the ocean. Uh, hope to see you soon.